Hi guys, quick video today. I want to show you high speed machining here on our Herco VM20. Um, so I want to show you a special tool we're using. I'll go here, we'll pick it up. The reason the table is moving away during a tool change is we have the safety position set up. So if you have a long tool and a high workpiece, it won't crash into it. Okay, here is the tool I want to show you guys. It's a high, high feed mill. Um, a company called Millstar makes them. They're made in USA. And what they do is they have, you see there's no flutes up the shank is relieved. You just have these cutting flutes at the bottom. Uh, and this tool is a 1 8 inch diameter and it does six times the depth of cut. It does a three quarter inch depth of cut. So it's really cool. We found a good use for it for like coring out material. If you have a big pocket that's through the part, um, you could just blast this around. You don't make the whole pocket into chips. You, you make a core like an apple. So I'll, I'll show you that right now. We'll grab a piece of stock here. So, here this is uh, 8 inch diameter, inch and a half thick, A2. So we're going to come over, we're going to put that in the machine. I've already blown this all off. Now we just tighten this up. So I have a four, about a four and three eighths hole going in this thing. So it's going right through it. So rather than making that all chips, we're going to use this tool to core it out. And how this tool works is I'll show you in our program screen here. So we just do a mill contour, so that's actually a 4.4 inch hole we're making, so <clears throat> let's do next operation, next segment. Um, you see I'm only going to be going down 7 thousandths of an inch, um, so it goes down, the, the helix is down a lot of times, and we're going to go to 770, negative .77. A little over three quarters of an inch. So here we have an inch and a half. And we're going to have to flip the stock to, uh, to, you know, we can't go the full inch and a half in one shot. So we're going to flip it both ways. We could do it if we use a bigger tool, like a, like a quarter inch tool. But I'd rather get a bigger piece of stock out of the middle to use it. See, I've been, been saving all these. So these are all nice pieces of stock. And A2 is like pretty expensive material and these make little good fixtures and stuff and the program only takes about uh, I think it's like eight minutes per side so about 16 minutes to take that piece out probably making it in chips on a lathe you probably could do that a lot faster but I don't know we just decided to do this because we get the cool piece of material and kind of hoarding material over here but no it's good stuff um, I mean you know you have less chip management because you're making a big slug. You don't have all these chips all the time. All right, let's get this thing running. So very simple to program. And what's so good about the Herco is I went through quite a few of these feed mills trying to set this up right. And really has to do with like the coolant. Um, you know, you want to get the coolant right on the tool. If you tried this with any other tool, this thing would just snap because if there was, if there was flutes all the way up here, you're going to see we're going to put a deep slot in here and the flutes would just that you can't get the chip management i mean even on the horizontal i think you'd, you'd snap that thing in this matter of seconds this shank is also a lot stronger i mean look how small this tool is i mean this is tool steel but the shank is um, a lot stronger because it's not all relieved with flutes so it can make a three quarter inch you know deep slot and and tool steel like that i don't know it's just a pretty unbelievable tool 
they really, you know, a lot of technology into the, the grind on this, the flute geometry of high feed mills. It's really cool. All right, so let's get this thing cutting. Enough said and done. So, you know, what, what I was saying was, what's so cool about the Herco was like dialing this tool in was very convenient because we work right on the machine. So if it's like, oh, my helix, you know, my angle is a little too steep. Let me shorten that. You know, I just multi, I can multiply that by a, you know, a number, um, and that's just so easy. Rather than posting it out, you know, cam systems are powerful, but if you had to keep posting it out and keep changing it, it's because this there's a lot of numbers and a lot of lines. Um, you can't, you know, do it quickly without a conversational um, output. So that was really cool, and I. I kind of ran out of spindle speed. Like I kind of wish we had a VMX machine with more um, RPM because we only have 10,000 RPM here. And if you look at this tool, uh, tool setup. So look how we're running this tool. Oh, that was the wrong tool. 125. Um, we're going 9,100, a little almost 9,200 RPM, um, and we're going 183 inches a minute. You know, if, we, if I had it 15,000 RPM, we could run the same, um, well, we run more surface feed, but the same uh, feed per flute, which you can see is 5,000. I mean, that alone, 5,000 um, feed per flute feed rate is very fast for that diameter tool. I'm pointing at a wash screen here. All right, but let's get this thing going. Probably got to cut all this out. I'm talking too much here, but just so excited about this tool. So we're just going to run that one segment. Actually, you know what? Let me uh, let me just try and kind of make a little viewport here. I really have been trying to get something figured out with the GoPros. I keep losing the the, the cases because the coolant just eats away. So I got to get this coolant line perfect. Oh, that's pretty good. So look at that thing go. So it's just gonna whittle all the way down. I probably won't make you guys watch the whole thing, but just 180 inches a minute, seven thou, depth of cut, helix. And we're gonna get this nice core out of our part. That is so cool. I got it in a hydraulic holder, dual contact. That's such, that's so, I, I mean, I can't, no one, I, everyone I show this, they can't believe it. It's just such a cool tool. And I got this uh, Dan's Discount Tools, because these things are really expensive. And I, you know, sometimes you get a promo code, um, and Dan, it'll help you out if you buy a lot of things. So I got a pretty good deal on these. But definitely go check out Dan's Discount Tools, you know, for, you know, tools like this, the list price on these things are very expensive, so Dan can help you out with that. Um, so yeah, awesome. Really just, look at that thing just slotting away. Look how deep we already are. We're already 100,000 steep. Just climbing, climbing down. Now, if we had a bigger diameter, we could ramp down at a bigger helix angle. But I don't, I want, like I said, I wanted that nice, I'm getting a four inch, you know, over four inch piece, four and eighth inch piece, you know, out of this. And we use this stuff all the time for our five axis fixtures. And A2 is an incredibly good tool steel to work with because you've got a high hardness. You could go to like 62 Rockwell. Um, and it's very stable if you do the correct draw at the heat treater. If you make sure you do like a double draw, it won't move too much on you. I've forgotten to ask for the double draw, and I, I have seen it move like a thousandth per inch. So you got to be careful if you're doing finished holes and stuff, and then have the heat treat and don't have the um, commodity of jig grinding it after heat treat like we do. But yeah, so um, we'll let this thing go, and then I'll flip it over, and I'll show you how we take it out. All right, so... Eight minutes and 18 seconds for side one. Wow, the tool is still there. That's unbelievable. Let's move forward. Can you believe that? 
770 deep. One eighth inch. That's insane. It's it's showing six thou over because I have a little bit of a, a chamfer there, but it's seven seventy. Wow. Wow. Alright, let's flip. Do side two. Here we are on side two. Going to seven seventy. Saw for a minute it was broken there. Right in the part. We got like I think six or eight parts in a row, both sides, with one tool. Probably more if the just the coolant nozzle the was broken before. We just put a new nozzle on. If anyone wants to know, it's some weird brand. It's not Lockline. So we ordered it broke a year ago. We've had it broken for a year, this little nozzle. Because we ordered Lockline quarter inch and half inch, the only size they make, so it said three eighths, but really talking about the output diameter <clears throat> anyway we found out some other brand jet on jet on one word jet on but uh yeah so now we got the coolant nozzle i think that makes a huge difference coolant nozzle so just grab our hammer that's it grab our little magnet Ah, need a stronger magnet. Alright, I think I need two hands for this. Oh, there it goes. Into the graveyard. To be respawned into something else. That's it. Now we got our nice part cored out. Ready to keep going. 